The aviation started when he was young. His dad brought home a, a little device that when you spun it, it would fly. And from that point, that sparked those boys into wanting to fly. He was born in 1867, and he was born here in Millville, Indiana. Wilbur Wright was half of the Wright brothers who had actually pioneered flight in the United States. They were the first ones that proved themselves to be the first flyers. He was uh, kind of mischievous, I guess, when he was little. Him and Orville would sneak out to the barn lot and take some of the equipment apart just to see how it worked. And then uh, Miss Susan Wright, the mom, would actually have to take him back to the farmhouse the next day and, and make him put the stuff back together. And she wouldn't help him. They'd have to do it themselves. So they were, they were just kids, you know, ornery but kids. Orville started a newspaper business and he was the editor and Wilbur went along with him and so they had a newspaper for a few years. Then they went into the bicycle business. They was repairing at first and they built their own bicycles. And all along they were kind of getting things ready to, to go to, to Kitty Hawk and start flying or start trying to fly. I really can't imagine what people were saying about these two crazy dudes down on Kitty Hawk, bowler hats on, ties, trying to fly. People can't fly. If God wanted people to fly, he'd put wings on them, you know? And they'd go down there just to watch them wreck, you know, tear up the plane. They'd go back, fix it, and do it again. And when you look at it now, they were heroes and they were just smart, smart people. But back then they were thought of as kind of kooky, like a lot of the other really intelligent people, you know, in life. They were the biggest influence in, in flights. So the main thing is that they were the first in controlled flight. They were the first to take off, turn, and come back. That's why we think of them as the fathers of aviation. His father actually was real adamant about clean water. And he was always worried about making the water clean so they wouldn't get whatever the disease was. And Wilbur, I think maybe he was in France and ate some shellfish and that gave him the disease and he died of it. That's what he died of in 1912. Milton Wright, his father, wrote later about his son Wilbur in his diary, a short life full of consequences, an unfailing intellect, mild temper, great self-reliance, and as great modesty. Seeing the right clearly, pursuing it steadfastly, he lived and died. Welcome to the birthplace of Wilbur Wright. Milton Wright, Wilbur's father, purchased this house and acreage for $700 in 1865. The house here uh, where Wilbur was born was run by the state for years, and now it's a private organization, the Wilbright Foundation. And um, it actually burnt twice and was rebuilt this last time in the exact replica of the original house. And there's a lot of the, the wood and stuff that's in it was in the original house. And the replica we have the, here at the museum is probably the most accurate. And the reason I'm saying that is we actually have the chain from the Diamond Chain Company in Indianapolis, Indiana, and that's the same thing that the Wright brothers had on theirs. We have the only plane that has that. So ours is the most exact replica. It took the guy about 10 to 12 years to actually build the plane and it did fly. It got up about 18 inches off the ground and he put it back down. He was afraid he'd tear it up. It took him so long to build it. Now he had a 13 year old daughter 
that actually sewed all the Decron. This is not a cotton top on ours, it's a Decron, and uh, that was one of the things that's different from the original. Measurements are 60 feet wide, it's 600 pounds. It has a 12 horsepower, four cylinder motor that was actually designed by the Wright Brothers mechanic for the original plane. We have a lot of flight history. We've got a place called Main Street back here. It looked like Main Street in Dayton. It shows their first business was a printing press. We've got a bicycle in there, kind of replica of the bicycles. It's really a great place to read. We have so much reading material here. It's really a, a gem in the country.